Welcome into Warchant TV. This is Ira Schofeld, managing editor of Warchant.com, and I'm joined today for our Florida State men's basketball season preview for 21, 2021 22. Uh, Adrian Crawford, who uh, many of you know from his days as a Florida State basketball player back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and then also as uh, one of the voices of Seminole basketball alongside Gene Deckerhoff. Adrian's been doing the uh, color analyst uh, role for the last couple of seasons for the Seminoles as well. So it's a great pleasure and privilege to have my man Adrian here to uh, break down the 2021-2022 the, uh, uh, Florida State men's basketball team and give you guys an idea of what you can expect as FSU starts the season Wednesday night at home against uh, University of Pennsylvania. How's it going, Adrian? How you doing, man? I'm doing well, sir. I'm doing well. It's a real honor to be here. Excited to kick off basketball season. So, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's a great time, a great time of the year right now. You know I mean? A little cold outside in Tallahassee, you know, don't feel like I'm in hell. And actually basketball's on, so it's, it's all good for me. <laughs> and, and we're moving on from football right now, so that's a good thing yeah, as hey, well. Yeah, let, let me tell you, again, it's been double hell in Tallahassee. <laughs> Um, well, listen, man, we're going to start off. We're going to talk about where Florida State is as a program, kind of go through some of the players, maybe focus a little bit more on the newcomers, what you've seen from the team so far in the exhibitions uh, and in practice, and then kind of wrap up from there. But Florida State, for people that haven't been paying attention yet, is that they're getting to now turn their attention to uh, basketball, uh, enters the season number 20 in the preseason a AP Top 25. Uh, they're number two in the preseason ACC rankings, uh, second to Duke. Um, which I think, you know, speaks to how far this program has come now. You know, you've won, you've gone to three straight Sweet 16s. Uh, the one year they didn't have an NCAA tournament, you finished number four in the country, might have been uh, one of the picks to uh, win the national title because of the tournament getting canceled. But um, you, you lose four of your five starters from last season, four of your five, top five scorers from last season, several of your top rebounders, top playmakers, Scotty Barnes, number four pick in the draft, and you're still picked to come back and be number two in the ACC. What do you think that says? you know, about Leonard Hamilton's program. Um, obviously, they're bringing in a lot of talent as well, but what do you think it says about the program to, to be picked the way they are uh, after losing as much as they've lost? Yeah, I just think it speaks to just kind of the philosophy of what they decided to do. You know, if you watch them, it's really next man up. I mean, they're playing – I mean, at any point in time over the last really five or six years, you could go, I mean – 12 deep if you wanted to and so it really is like next man up and I think this program they also again with all these guys you're saying who are leaving you know some of these one and dones but I think this program has been built on these four and five year guys you know again you know the Anthony Polites the Raekwon Grays guys like that and Scotty Barnes and what, what he's doing in the NBA so far with Patrick uh, Williams <laughs> did in the NBA before his injury Terrence Mann continues to just take off what does that do for the program? I mean, if you turn on an NBA game, if you turn on NBA on TNT um, just about any night during the week or ESPN, there's a chance you're going to see a Noel playing a, a major role. Uh, what do you think that's doing for the program? Um, it's doing a lot. And here's why I believe it's doing a lot, Ira, is because I think what these guys are actually seeing now is – you know, one, you know, again, they're always on TV, you know, these, you know, TNT, I mean, and, and you know, and you got all the, all the uh, commentators, they talk about Florida State guys, right. because the one thing is this, that these guys play basketball, that's what you're hearing them say, these guys play basketball the right way. Um, again, as we were recording last night, um, uh, Kevin Durant, you know, Kevin Durant has this whole yeah. thing about talking about Scotty Barnes, and, and here's what he said, he has a high IQ, and he makes the right basketball plays, and then he's like, man, it's like, that kid's 20 years old, like, you know, and I think what 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 they're going against the grain on, which is an amazing thing that you got to give credit to coach and staff, is the fact that we're saying, we, we always talk about this generation being selfish and whatever, yeah. he has gotten these young kids to buy into, hey, you know, you've got two of the last, uh, you know, top five picks come off the bench, You've had three of your last first round picks come off the bench, you know? And so I think when it's all said and done, what he has bought in, he's built something completely different that goes against the grain of what culture says. And these kids have all bought into that. So I think it's a place where people want to come and they want to play. And I think the other thing he's done, um, Iris, I think this coaching staff has gone after the players that fit what they do. They're not just only going after now, you know, before he had to just go after coach and staff had to go over, can we get a five-star? Can we get a four to get talent? Now he's going after players who he just wants. I mean, again, one guy, we you know Devin Vassell right now, yeah. Devin Vassell, two-star guy. No one really was recruiting Devin Vassell. He's the 11th pick. And they, that's the other thing. They develop players right. like that. And again, that, that's a lot of credit to him and to the coach and his staff. And I think they've built something real special and continue to do it. All right, so looking forward to looking ahead to this season, uh, it's an interesting team. As I mentioned at the beginning, you do lose four or five uh, top scorers. 
some yeah. top players, top rebounders. Um, but you but you look at the returning guys. It's a nice nucleus of returning guys. Uh, I, I'm going to go through those guys real quick just to kind of recap for people that uh, haven't been paying close attention yet. Uh, and then maybe we'll talk about one or two of them. But you bring back Anthony Polite, uh, who can play point guard, two guard, uh, has been in the program now you know, a long time, is a veteran, uh, might be one of your top players, was a guy that came in, another one of those guys you talk about developing, the first year or two in the program wasn't a, a superstar, but has really developed into one of the top guards, one of the top defensive guards for sure uh, in the ACC. Malik Osborne is back, big forward, who can is uh, kind of one of those stretch forwards that, that Leonard Hamilton likes so much, can shoot the three. Uh, Wyatt Wilkes is back, a sharpshooter, another guy that's been in the system for four or five years. As you mentioned, another guy that's just no, can coach on the floor because he's been in the system so long. Raquan Evans came in last year, uh, has been in the program now for a couple of years. A junior college transfer has really added a lot to the team, has really played well in the exhibition season as a scorer. Uh, and then you bring in two, you have two more big guys returning, Tenor Ngam and Quincy Ballard, uh, neither, of which, neither of which was a, a huge part of that team last year, but they were on the team. They did get to practice with the team all last season. So that rec- returning group, of players. Um, Adrian, I want to kind of get your thoughts on Raquan Evans in particular um, and, and Malik Osborne. Raquan Evans, have what we've seen in this preseason, uh, he's led them in scoring in both exhibition games, had, you know, really shot the ball well, has been very assertive. Can that carry over to the season? Can he be that guy for this team? Or, or do you think he's going to go kind of, when you get back into ACC play, is he going to kind of fall back into that, that second group role? Yeah, no, I actually think Raekwon Evans was just one thing away from being a really good player. Um, I give his first year here. I don't know if you remember near uh, near the end of the year, um, he was really during that. You know, right before COVID happened, he was really he started really getting better and really helping this team coming right. off the bench. And um, last year, I think, man, I mean. I, a lot of confidence was lost. Uh, confidence was lost him. I think you know that situation where um, when um, you know when uh, the young man from Florida, um, you know when he had his uh, you That's know right. uh, his situation, right. yeah, when he had a situation there, I think that really rattled him as a player. I think he rattled a lot of guys, and, and I think it took him a while to get his confidence back. So the answer to the question, I just think he's got confidence. He's got the one thing he's missed is confidence, and I don't think that's going to go away because the one thing that confidence is built to is when you've been in a program for three years and you just know what you do. And I think he ex- he accepts who he is and he knows how to get get his game off within the system of how they play i don't see him ever falling back into that second role i think when it is go time uh down the stretch he's gonna have to be a guy that's in the game because he he is uh he's got veteran leadership and he understands and he, and he's actually the guy that can get us into what we need to do you mentioned uh, he's keontae johnson uh the florida yep. uh, basketball player who in the game last year against fsu tragic situation uh, basically from what we understand, it basically had a heart attack during the game, and uh, there was thoughts he might not recover. And and uh, Raekwon was one of the guys, as you said, was right there. And apparently, sounds like he had had some other issues in his past where he'd seen something like that, and it really kind of affected him. They were afraid he might. They were concerned at one point that he may not want to play the rest of that season, uh, and he did. So that's a good point. It's a really good point. He has been in the program now a couple of years, uh, so maybe he steps up, steps up. And then Malik Osborne. I think we know what we got. I think we know what Florida State has in Anthony Polite and Wyatt mm-hmm. Wilkes. Um, where do you see Malik Osborne fitting in? It seemed like last year there were times where, man, when he brought that energy and, 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 and you know, there were times it seemed like he could be a huge part of this offense. But then there yeah. were other games where he kind of <laughs> kind of disappeared. Like, what's the key for him to be a more consistent force for them? Yeah, I think it's just like – I mean, like most players – you know, I, I think it's just accepting who you are as a player. I mean, Malik Osborne, I always say he's the soul of this team. You know, when his energy is high, the team's energy is high. When the team's energy is down and he decides to get his energy up, the team's energy comes up. He's the soul of this team. I think what's, what he's going to have to do this year is where I think he can be incredibly dangerous is honestly is when they have to put him at the five. And I think they're going to have to do that this year. Um, we can probably talk about more about these bigs later, but I think yeah. if there's an Achilles heel, this team is their five. I don't think their fives are developmental guys. Um, I think these guys are not really uh, there. You know what I've seen so far in exhibition practice, those guys aren't ready yet. Um, I think they can maybe get you, you know, a few minutes here and there. Um, but again, I think he's going to have to be there, but here's the thing. 
a guy like him who can really guard one through five, strong enough to do it, he's a nightmare at the five for people. I mean, imagine you playing against North Carolina and Amon Baycott's going to have to go around right. picking a pop and chasing him. You know, he, he'll pull shot blockers out because he can shoot the ball. Um, and he's a little bit different. He doesn't handle the ball like a Turk does. So when we've been really good, we've had a four who can put it on the deck, pass through whatever. That's not really Malik. But what Malik can do is he can rebound the basketball. He really can defend and guard. And he can make shots. And I think if he'll accept that, I'm telling you, he's the type of guy who will be so critical to this team this year and will have an opportunity um, to make, whether well, it's a G League roster, things like that, just because he's willing to do just the stuff that you need. And so I think, you know, again, if he's willing to stick that, I think he's going to have a great year. I want to move ahead to the newcomers, um, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the team from a team perspective. But uh, it's a – man, this is an exciting group of newcomers. And obviously, Leonard Hamilton and his staff have recruited an incredibly well, uh, high level uh, for many years now. Um, but this group is interesting because you bring in some proven players – uh, or guys who played college basketball. And then you also bring in some really talented newcomers, as talented a new class of newcomers uh, as maybe they've had. Uh, we got to start with Caleb Mills, the Houston transfer who came in last year and uh, sat out, came transferred at the, at the mid-semester break in January, uh, was with the team, but was, was not able to participate uh, until the end of that year. Uh, we've got a chance to see him now in the preseason and the exhibitions. Looks to be as good as advertised, man. For the people who haven't seen Caleb Mills yet, uh, could you describe what, what Florida State's got in uh, the Houston transfer? Yeah, I mean, I'm, again, you know, I whenever me and you talk, you know, off air, I mean, if I'm talking about somebody at basketball, I'm talking about Caleb Mills. I'm I'm excited. Again, I've affectionately called him five guys because if you ever go to five guys and you get those fries, man, it's, those fries are endless. His skill set, he's five guys. The, his skill set is endless. Um, you know, I was sitting there watching. Matter of fact, before we recorded, I was, I was over at practice, and, and they were running like a shot clock play, and my man made a move. And it was like, I always told him, he's got like this hybrid. He's like the 21st century. Like a, he's got like this like hood Ginobili game where I'm like, dude, this dude's got so much <laughs> swag, but he's got this Euro game. And that's like, he can just score at all levels. That's the thing that we have not had a player that could score the ball on these levels since Tony Douglas. Like that's how good I think the kid can be. And again, it's because he can put the ball on the floor. He can get wherever he wants to go on the floor. And here's the thing that was most impressive for me watching him so far is he actually wants to guard people. Normally guys who can really score, they'll guard because they have to. He actually wants to guard. And when you got probably, I think, your best scorer, like wanting to guard, I mean, you're going to be special. I mean, again, he was preseason player of the year at Houston going to last year, a team that went to the Final Four. So, I mean, the kid is as good as advertised. And, I mean, again, you know, you know, Coach Ham, and then to the credit to their staff for being able to get that one done. When you look at uh... – you know, the backcourt, I mean, they, you know, again, Florida State's kind of made this transition over the last several years to positionless basketball. So so all these guys are basically guards now. But, man, they brought in so much talent uh, in the, on the perimeter. The other guy, next guy I want to talk about is Matthew Cleveland, uh, who's, you know, super highly recruited, coming out of high school, one of the top 30, 40 players in the country, maybe even higher than that. Uh, he's a long athletic wing, very much in the mold. I mean, he he looks like if you if you went to, you know, the the, the, the lab, <laughs> and just kind of etched out what Leonard Hamilton wants. I mean, he's got the length, he's got the height for a guard, he's got uh, the athleticism, he's got the intelligence, he's got the basketball mm -hmm. IQ. Uh, what have you seen from him so far? And like, what, what kind of a, how would you compare him? Like, what, what, what should people expect him to be like? What I would say is this, Matthew Cleveland, again, yeah, he's a special kid. Um, you know, as I've been watching him, I mean, he's a, I mean, he's a gym rat. He's a kid who's just constantly wanting to get better. I mean, when he came in, just to give you a perspective, when he came in, his biggest flaw when I was watching him was that he didn't shoot the ball great. Like, he didn't shoot the ball great. The other night, he goes three for three from the three-point line. Yeah. Like, and his form has changed really fast. The thing about it, so kids like that just get better. When you're already naturally talented and you work at it, there's only positives. And so he's kind of, and again, I want you to, he's, he, he's a little bit like Pat Williams, where um, again, he's long, he can guard, he's not as big as Pat, but the thing about him is that 
I mean, he can really defend. I mean, high energy length gets there. I mean, let me tell you this. I thought, I mean, with this group coming in their town, you always kind of say, okay, this guy maybe, you know, I kind of go in our, he's got to be here for two years, three years, whatever. Like I'm watching Matthew Cleveland play and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, no family. Like, let's just enjoy. Like I used to say about Pat Williams, everybody's like, you're crazy. I'm like, dude, just enjoy the show. <laughs> just enjoy the show this year. Cause I think the kid will be in the association next year. He could be the next one Ira in that line of kids who come off the bench get six man of the year um or something like that and be a top five top ten pick i mean he now i'm not saying i mean again things have got to fall but i don't think anybody would say that about pat williams you know going into it but i mean he's got that type of skill set and ability and i'll say this really quick the other day in our exhibition game when i really knew this team had something special and they had a little guard that was like florida college that was breaking us down off the dribble really good guard and Matthew Cleveland had a stretch where he was on him. And I'm talking about this kid was on an island. And it was like back in the day, Daryl Revis. It was like, you know, like old school Deion <laughs> Sanders. Like, you're just out there lonely. My man couldn't do nothing. He just got rid of the ball. And so, I mean, he's a special, special player as well. All right. So then, uh, again, moving around the perimeter, Jalen Worley, who's uh, coming as a point guard. You know, again, I, I didn't know. You know, I heard about him as a combo guard. I didn't know. You know, Leonard Hamilton so often will go after these combo guards. And then a lot of times it kind of takes them time to learn how to be a point guard. This guy seems like he's more of a point guard. I mean, what have you thought when you've seen him so far? I mean, he can finish around the basket. Another really just skilled player. That to me, I guess, about this whole freshman class is, you know, you just think of even when they brought in talented players in the class in the past, I don't know if they were this skilled. Uh, mm. What's impressed you about Jalen Worley so far? Yeah, I mean, you watch him the other night. If I'm not mistaken, he was, I think he was seven for or five for five. I think he's five for five. I think he had seven assists. Here's what he is. He's, I mean, again, you know, they have that mantra here. You know, you hear new buzz, but also you hear the thing called big guard you. He fits right. big guard you. I mean, he is six, five, six, six, big body bends, can get downhill on you, can score, can, and he has great IQ. And here's the thing that's really interesting is that the kid has actually grown, you know, about an inch and a half, two inches since they recruited him. His wow. foot has grown. I mean, I think my man wears like a size 17 out there. So I don't think he's done growing. Wow. And here's the thing, and he can actually move his feet. You know, you worry about with a guy like that, can he move his feet? I mean, man, he can move his feet. And so I actually thought he'd be a kid who's like, oh, he's going to take him some time. But I'm watching him and I'm like, yeah, he's going to come in. And I think, you know, he's going to have his lumps. I mean, I don't care who you are playing the point guard at a, at a high major division one school, which again, as a big guard, which I had to do, man, that's a hard thing to do. There's so many things, you know, it's like being a quarterback. You got to know where everybody's supposed to be. You got to, you know, you're picking up full court. I mean, you have to really be in tune to what's actually happening, but the kid has the IQ to do it. And he's just going to get better as the year goes on, the more reps he gets. So at that point guard position, are you thinking Anthony Polite, Raquan Evans handling the bulk of it, and then uh, Jalen Worley kind of being worked into it, or how do you see the point guard oh, position? Oh no, I, I think it's Raquan. I think it's Raquan Evans, and I think it's I think it's Worley. I think those two. Oh really? Will split. Okay. Yeah, I think those two will split. And hey, don't and don't be shocked if you see the green team legend Justin Linder. He may get hey, Justin Linder. Hey, people sleep. Justin huh? Linder. Hey, I love Justin Leonard's game because let me talk to you, but I've never met a walk on talk so much cash than Justin <laughs> Linder. That dude is uber confident. And so I wouldn't listen, Justin Linder, he'll come in and get you some minutes, get you into what he's okay. been around the program. So I think it'll go definitely uh, Raekwon Evans. It'll go Worley. And then I think Linder, I don't think you'll see too much of polite unless we get in a situation where someone gets hurt, we'll see polite. Okay. One this year. But he will be guarding the ball a lot though, right? Oh, yeah. And, but, you know, the way they play, you know, Ira, again, you know, what most people think is they watch Florida State play and how they pick up. You know, they see him play full court right. and they pick up and you, a lot of people say, oh, well, this point to a man. No, there's a full system that they actually do. If you go back, you know, in the 2008, 2009, when you actually watch like the Boston Celtics, how they played and how they built, that's a lot of what they do. They build out. I mean, there is a an intricate system of how they guard. So to answer your question, yes, he will be picking up. Um, but, you know, that's why sometimes you ever see him pick up the ball. The next thing you know, you may mess around and have Malik Osborne on the ball right, or this right. kind of ball. It's just the way that the way it falls, who gets it, who's back where they're supposed to be. But he'll definitely be guarding some of the best players. But, you know, we switch one through five. And, and so everybody's right. got to be able to guard somebody. The other uh, freshman in that group that I think you kind of lo look at those guys together, John Butler. Uh, you know, he's a guy who, uh, you know, I share the story a lot of times. When he committed to Florida State, we posted a story that Florida State signed another center. Uh, another highly talented center and someone on the staff called me very quickly and said, Hey man, John Butler's not a center. 
And uh, we, we've seen that now since we've seen him uh, in these exhibitions. He is a guy kind of like a J.I., Jonathan Isaac, uh, can shoot it, has a really pretty touch, um, you know, can put the ball on the ground, really plays kind of like a guard. Mm -hmm. You talk about big guard you, he's as big as it gets, is a, a close to seven feet tall. Um, wh what have you seen from John Butler so far? How do you think he works in as a freshman? Yeah, I think, you know, this is the one thing I try to tell people is that when you get to college basketball, it's just so much thrown at you. And so one of the things you see John right now is this. John's going to be one of those kids that he's probably about – that he this year will be all about learning, developing. I think he'll get some minutes and be able to help us in the spots. But I mean, he's a kid by his, by he'll be way better at sophomore by his junior year. Um, I, I think you're talking about a kid who could potentially be a lottery pick just because on the strict size. I mean, you're seven one. Um, you know, you can shoot it, you can pass it, you can handle it. It's just, you know, but again, he weighs 185 pounds. So right. it's just like, you know, he's just, it's just development, you know, and like one of my, you know, one of my former teammates, Terrell Baker always says, man, you're ready when you're ready. You know, like you can't, you can't, you can't speed it up. You know, he's like that, you know, it's like that popcorn in the microwave. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people want to be the one that, you know, pops first, but usually that's the one that gets burnt. You know, Don Butler's going to be that guy right at the end when you're taking the, taking the bag out the microwave and pops at the end. So that's going to be, um, John Butler, but man, I think he'll help you because I mean, again, I mean, what are you going to do when you're at the four, three, four, and you're like, oh yeah, hey, you know, like we're rolling at seven, one. You're like, I mean, that's the thing about this team. You just rotate, just, I mean, like one guy goes out and it's like, oh, there's another mutant that comes in the game. It's like, what, you know, and it's just, it's a length and it, and it causes, causes people problems. That's the thing when you look at Butler, it's like, man, if that kid's shooting on the wing and he spots up at the wing, I mean, you can't, you can't get a hand <laughs> in his face. He's seven feet tall. Um, but yeah, yeah. that's a, uh, the other two uh, newcomers that are transfers, actually, um, you bring in uh, Cameron Fletcher from Kentucky. He was a really highly uh, recruited player coming out of high school, coming out of St. Louis. Uh, he's a guy that I didn't know exactly what they were going to get because he didn't get to play much last year at Kentucky before he transferred. Uh, but he's a guy you look at physically, and that's the first thing that jumped out to me when I saw him was just that dude is thick, man. He looks yeah. like he's, he's, he's a grown man. Um, you know, obviously, he's, not, he's probably not – a guy that's going to come in and be a dynamic score right away. What, what kind of role do you see for Cameron Fletcher? Yeah. I mean, here's what I'll tell you. I mean, he is a, I mean, you said it right, man. You know, I really am impressed and I really like Cam Fletcher. I mean, he is a tough kid. I mean, grew up, I mean, East St. Louis kid. I mean, he's a tough, tough kid. And the thing about him that I was super impressed with the other night, I mean, in that exhibition game, it was a pretty, it was a tight game. They were making threes early. Cam Fletcher gets in the game. And it helps change that game in about a four minute stretch. I mean, and, and the thing about him, he just will go out there. And I think he'll be a guy who they'll probably play honestly, even though he's a three, I think he'll hybrid to that kind of four spot. And I think he's going to be really special for us at that four spot. I mean, I think at times, I mean, you're going to rotate those guys. Wyatt Wilkes, who's really gotten better. Um, I think Fletcher, um, I think sometimes Osborne, when Osborne's not at the five, I think you're going to rotate those guys. I think he'll come in because they're saying he's a big time athlete. I mean, people yeah. haven't really seen it yet. He's a big time athlete. He really, again, he's another guy who can really guard and he's tough. That's the thing about this group, Ira, is they just love like this group, like Trent Forrest group, the year that, you know, that we could have won a national championship. They had the guard. Like they, they knew, okay, we got to turn it up and guard this group. I mean, these dudes are like sharks. These are like sharks out there. As soon as they get in the game, I mean, it's like we call them like they're the hike your shorts up team. They're the team like, man, we don't pull the shorts up. You're like, and, and as an offensive guy, that's the worst team to play against because it's just relentless. And he's another one of those guys, and they're just tough. That's what you're going to see this year with this group that you may not think this is just a very tough group as individuals. Talking about his athletic ability, the one day uh, I was out of practice, I was talking to one of the staff members and he did, a, he did something happen. He got the ball off the rim in the lane and just kind of made this move. And I thought it was impressive, but uh, somebody on the staff that was standing next to me said, man, there's only a few people in this country that can do what that guy just <laughs> did from an athletic he, standpoint. So he's he definitely, is. And he's definitely that. And the thing about, and I'll say this is that, you know, with Cam and again, I think that, you know, this, and I think, you know, we always have to mention this. The one thing about, you know, Leonard Hamilton is that, you know, Leonard Hamilton sees beyond, you know, Cam, you know, it was, you know, very public some of the things he had, you know, he had some, some issues on the team in Kentucky, but here's the thing about it is that I've watched him now with coach Ham and coach Ham knew what he was getting into. And that's what coach does coach. One of the things he's, he's a master at 
is not being a reactive leader, but actually being a proactive one. So he's gotten Cam the help he needs. He's got him, you know, he's constantly got the right people around him, who he's room. I mean, even from who he rooms right. with to the stuff he does. And so, I mean, this kid, if he can do it, I mean, again, I think that this kid's got a chance to really be a very vital part for us this year. Yeah, I thought a good sign was in the first exhibition that uh, he wasn't <laughs> able to play. He wasn't, uh, he didn't get to play. He didn't get in the game. But he was on the bench, and, and just watching his body language on the bench, I was impressed. I mean, he, he was very engaged, watched every play, supported his teammates. When guys were coming in and out of the game, he'd be the first guy over to, to give him five. I mean, it just seemed like he was very engaged, which, again, is a good sign considering, like you said, uh, the reputation of Kentucky was that there maybe there might have been some temperamental um, yep. issues. Uh, the last two guys I wanted to bring up, and you, you touched on Justin Linder earlier, was the the two the last two remaining members of the original Green Vipers? Uh, you got Justin Linder back, and you also have Harrison Prieto back, uh, the weatherman. And you know, I, I didn't I didn't think either one was going to come back. Uh, I thought Justin was going to go on to coaching. That was what he wanted to do, and Harrison was going to go further into grad school. Uh, but they've convinced them to come back, and man, I think it's huge. Uh, you can see it. The practices are those exhibitions. I think people will see it at games. It's like having two more coaches on the staff, and two sometimes two coaches on the floor. Uh, you see it as much as anybody. If you could kind of explain to people how important those guys are. Yeah, I mean, so much so that, um, I mean, to bring them back, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if it was one or both or scholarship to come right. back. Yeah. yeah, and so listen, for anybody, I mean, you know, and, and whether if you're a college coach or you're in a business or whatever, to spend money on something, to spend something very valuable, college scholarship on someone, they have to actually add value. And so that speaks to these guys. They're not just, you know, guys, hey, everybody likes the Green Vipers when they get in, but these guys actually really bring leadership. And I think that that's what Coach saw was that with all these new guys coming in, to have more leadership that keeps that Florida State culture that's been going on. I mean, let me tell you this right now. I actually think, you know, Harry is going to play this year. We saw him the other night. He got in the game um, early on and got good minutes. You know, with uh, right now with Tenor and Gome did not play the other night. And Malik Osborne were both out. He got minutes. I actually think that just wasn't for that game. I think he's actually going to get minutes because the one thing he can do, you know, Harry, he can shoot the basketball. And so with the way we play, if you bring him in at the five, you're going to have to respect the fact. And the one thing about these guys, him and Justin, both, they're wildly confident. Like these guys, and that's what's different. <laughs> these guys don't, and you know, they, they are, they're just like, you're like, I've never seen something like this, but let me tell you this. It speaks to the culture of this team because it's actually the players, the scholarship players who put gas in their tank like that. I mean, if you ever really watch them, I mean, again, I always tell people, if you don't see this culture is different, Go watch these guys on Instagram. These dudes are like high school, like they're like high school girls, like how they respond. Like when somebody posts a pic, they're always in the comments. Like, I mean, literally the first 20 comments is everyone who's been a part, right? And it don't matter if it's a walk on. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, T light who's left. It doesn't matter. That's what they do. And these guys are going to add a lot of value. So, I mean, it wouldn't shock me. You're going to see them this year, get some minutes and really help this team. Yeah. I also think, you know, Harrison can, I mean, he's physical. He can guard uh, down in the paint as well. So yeah, I mean he he's going to front the post. I don't care who he's going up against. He's going he's going to get he's going to get position on defense. Yeah. Um, last couple of things I want to ask you, man. So and you touched on it earlier when you talked about the defense that you've seen so far and the the intensity that they're guarding with. Um, is that the most is that the biggest thing that has you excited or or impressed so far from what you've seen, or is there something else about this group that has you excited? Yeah, no, it's that. It's their ability to guard. I mean, because here's the thing. The other night, Ira, they had 47 deflections in the game. So if you're a really good defensive team, you're getting about 25, 30, if you're good, like really good. They have 47. Here's the thing, Ira. They have 47, and it was so many mistakes. Like they say, they're like at 50%. And so that's what gets me excited because you see it off of just this ability, and I want to. Now, when you actually begin to, the more games that are played, they learn the system, you'll do it. Like, I'll give you a great example the other night that a lot of people would not have noticed. But um, I was actually talking to Anthony about this, is there was a play, and it was right around the end of the, it was the end of the first uh, half, uh, and it's right, right at the beginning, sorry, second half, a guy's on the top, drives the ball at Anthony, he covers up in the gap to help. His man back door cuts. Wyatt's in the right position. They don't say anything to each other. They don't communicate. Wyatt, this is not why it takes his man. Anthony doesn't see his man back dooring, so he mm -hmm. gets lost. Wyatt covers up, and Anthony doesn't even look. He runs right to the spot, 
to the corner to cover up an X out to cover Wyatt's man. And it's he like knows Wyatt's got him. He knows why he's like, oh, so he looked and, looked and then Wyatt covers up, he goes out there and guards it. And you're like, and nothing was ever said. See, that's now it's being in your program, but the point is that those young guys are gonna get that too. And once they figure that part out, I, I thought this group was a year away. Like I thought, hey, they're gonna be about a year away from being really good. As I watch them now, now I believe, and we can talk about that, I think they're going to take some lumps this year a little bit. Right. But when it comes to crunch time, I think this group, if they, can, if they can just buy in and everyone can just play the way they know they need to play, I think this group is going to be scary good. What concerns you? I mean, I, I know you talk, talked about the lack of proven big men and, and, and maybe even the fact that we don't even know if any of these big men you have Tenor and Gom coming back. He's been the system now for at least a year. He's an older guy. You do have the younger guys, Quincy Ballard and uh, Naheem McLeod. Oh, I didn't shoot. My bad. I meant to ask about Naheem McLeod. So he's the other newcomer I didn't bring mm -hmm. up. Uh, I did get to see him at practice. I didn't see – he didn't play in the first exhibition. We saw him at practice. He's another guy, man, for seven foot four. I think he's seven foot four. The, the things he does athletically are unbelievable. You would never think watching him run that he's actually seven foot four. Um, but obviously, he's still, you know, he played junior college, didn't have a ton of action. Uh, how much can he contribute this year? Yeah, um, I think Naheem is going to be a guy where, listen, he is, you know, he's developing. But let me tell you this. We all saw at the end of Michael Ojo's career right. what Ojo was. They are way farther along than what Ojo was. Right. And so, you know, they're way far along than a lot of the bigs they brought in, you know, from a Chris Kamaji, you know, Ojo, guys like that. Um, and so I think those guys are going to be okay. I think, listen, I think right now, in my opinion, those guys are going to be fighting for, you know, I think you're going to go with Malik, you're going to go with Ngom, going to get time, and Harris is going to get time. And I think one of those two guys between Ballard and McLeod are going to be fighting kind of for that fourth spot, kind of to be in that role. Um, so I think he's got to, now again, physically, both of him and Ballard, I mean, they are gifted physically. Um, but it's just like, but you know, basketball is more than just what you can do that. Can you process the information, do that? And I think those guys just got to get reps. But going back to your so, uh, thing, so what, what I work, yeah, what I worry about is that I worry about, I worry about the five spot. And here's the other thing I would worry about. Like I worry about, I worry about this with any team is that will they all just continue to buy in right. and trust it? Because here's what, this is the beauty of this group is like, listen, man, it is proven. You know, our guy CY says it all the time, like, read the data, chief. Like, listen, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, look, you come off the bench, you get six shots. You score six, eight points. I mean, Pat Williams averaged nine points right. and is a fourth pick in the draft. And if he didn't dislocate his wrist, you know, he was, I mean, he had first team all rookie last year. I mean, I mean, Scotty Barnes. I mean, that, that dude's out there on some where he only, where, Pro pros, like elite dudes don't want nothing to do with him guarding him. You know what I'm saying? They see Scotty guarding him. They throw the ball, go to the other side. Like, these guys just got to read the data and say, man, I'm going to trust the system and not let the outside stuff. Because that's what ends up messing up a lot of teams. You know, Ira, it's the outside stuff. It's your it's your people. It's your friends, your family. Hey, if you want to be a pro, you got to be doing this. But what I always try to tell these guys, hey, listen, how many pros have your parents developed? How many pros has your homeboy developed? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they haven't. Like, the people who've developed pros, like, listen know, to them. Like, it's know, not hard. I know he's playing 2K at home, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I say, oh, your homeboy Rico, who's like, yo, his, his 2K creator player is great, but I'm like, he's not like, he, his franchise is good, but I'm not going to like put my career in his hands, right? Like, I just think these, and so, like, that's the thing. I, if these guys can just buy into that. And don't let the outside stuff, but trust one another. Man, let me tell you this. Like, they could be as good as they want. And that's that would be my only thing. I think the five. And I think that's going to have to – that's going to come a lot to Malik Osborne. Will he be willing? You know what I mean? Because, again, I get it. Malik is – I mean, again, he's natural positions of four. But in the way we play, man, like, listen, I always tell people, Malik Osborne to five is a nightmare to people. And so – It's not, it's not I, like they're going to be – yeah, it's not like they're going to be asking him to play the back to the basket for yeah. 30 minutes and, you know, hammering the ball in the post. I mean, um, Listen, so he'll, get, he'll always, still get to show yeah. his skills. Absolutely. And that's the thing. And that's the one thing I would tell you, man, that, that Leonard Hamilton does. Like he actually in their staff, they're going to highlight those guys. You know I mean? Me and you've yeah. talked about this before. Pat Williams. There was a reason. Everybody's always saying, why is Pat Williams not playing? You know, like a lot early on. And you know why? It's because coach knew 
Pat's development and what he needed. He also knew, he knew, Pat, Coach used to sit there and tell me, he's like, Adrian, I'm only going to have this kid for one year. Now, he's a four-star. You know, when you talk about he's a top 10 player in the country, he's like, I'm going to have him for one year. But Coach knew that, but he also knew, man, I've got to let him develop. So when it's time to go and to make sure he's protected, that they're not getting crazy amount of film on him where he's just developing. And so that's the thing is that with a guy like uh, uh, Malik Osborne, he's going to put you in a position Malik, where you can just go and all the stuff you want, you're going to be able to do. But I just think that's the thing. But I think these guys, they really, though, have built such a winning culture, though, that I think they're all willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And to your point, and, and we'll wrap up here in a second, but the, the concerns you're talking about are things that in terms of outside distractions and all that, those probably won't be a problem in November, December, January. But but what we've seen in the past, I mean, obviously it's happened at a lot of programs. I think Leonard Hamilton, the staff, do a better job than most. But as you start getting closer to February, family members, friends start looking at who's getting the most shots, who's taking the most threes, who's doing so that's that's when that that part becomes becomes really important. When you look at this schedule, uh, anything, any big picture concerns or anything you need to see during the non-conference portion uh, go before the ACC play starts? Yeah, let me tell you this. As we're recording, we play Penn tomorrow. I actually worry about that game. You're talking about they've come back. Listen, they didn't play last year. They've got dudes who are 23, 24 years old. And you're talking about you're playing, and again, vet guys who, you know, they have a system they run. Um, they're going to press you. They're going to pick up on you. And here's the thing, and they're going to be deeper than they've ever been, and you're playing against a young team. So I were honestly like that preseason. So I, I want to tell everybody like, though, I am super high on this team. And I actually think this team has final four talent, but tomorrow as they play, like, again, I think we we're going to win. And, but I also know like it wouldn't shock me though, if it goes the other way, just because I know the development. So I think it's just going to be, can these guys go, you go to Purdue, right? I mean, again, you know, with Ivy, I mean, he's a full blooded monster. So it's like, okay, you're going to get a veteran team in the Midwest, at their place, that's going to be a tough game to win. But I think everyone has to understand, like, it's all about development. And I always want to remind people, when we finished number four in the country, we almost lost to Western Carolina at home, and everybody's about to burn the tuck center down when we did that. And we go on and win. Listen, like, just trust it. You know, I don't know what it is, but that Jay Leonard Hamilton magic, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if he's got a Harry Potter wand up in his office, but, man, he throws out one of them, one of, and it just works, and it's going to work. So I think there are going to be some good games up front. So I'm really excited to actually watch him, you know, against Penn. That's going to be a really good game. Um, but like I said, man, they are way farther along than I actually thought they would be. Awesome. Yeah, so like you said, uh, season starts Wednesday night. Well, tonight, maybe when this, uh, when you watch this, uh, 9 p.m. on the ACC Network, but don't don't watch or listen to ACC Network. Listen to uh, the Seminole broadcast. You can hear Gene Deckeroff and Adrian uh, kind of talk you through it, or maybe put on the video, but listen to Gene and Adrian uh, on the radio as well. Um, looking forward to having you involved a lot more on Warchant.com, Warchant TV throughout the season, Adrian. You obviously know the team better than anybody. Have un uh, unbelievable insights, and we really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to talking to you throughout the season and watching this team. And if if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you need to go out. And get your tickets to the Tucker Center because uh, this is going to be a, a really another really fun team to watch. So, thanks for joining us, Adrian, and we'll uh, talk to you next time. I appreciate it, Ira. Thank you so much.